living, hunting, even sleeping with man-eating lions. You'd have to say the two blokes you're about to meet are pretty brave, even a little crazy. Dave Salmoni and Kevin Richardson are conservationists risking life and limb to save the last of Africa's wild lions. With much of their wilderness fast disappearing, more and more lions are being forced into nature parks where many don't take too kindly to camera-wielding tourists. That's where Dave and Kevin come in. They're involved in a controversial new experiment to habituate lions to humans. As Jay Shadler reports, the stakes are high. Unless the lions learn to live alongside humans, their days are numbered. Question is whether these guys will survive themselves. In the midday heat, a pride of lions nap under a rose tree. But look and listen closely. Oh. That's, for me, true acceptance. I can lie down with them. I can sleep with them. I can interact with them as if I were alive. That's Kevin Richardson, a 34-year-old South African film producer and animal lover. That was truly... <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, well, like, that, that's what happens when you're integrated into a pride. You've got to experience it to feel it, and it's a privilege, it's a... It's a privilege, privilege, privilege. In less than an hour, Kevin can break just about every commandment in the lion trainer's Bible. Thou shalt not turn your back on a lion. Thou shalt not come between a mother and her cubs. And thou shalt never fall into a submissive position. <laughs> there is, of course, a method to this madness. I don't walk into an enclosure and go, oh, today I'm going to push the boundaries of how far I can put my head in a lion's mouth. These relationships, everyone must always realize, have taken years and years and years to develop. I was probably pretty selfish in the beginning. It was all about me. <laughs> what could I gain from it? But I soon realized that they were gaining from it too. Napoli. What they're gaining is an advocate. Though they are not wild animals, Kevin's notoriety has given him a platform to publicize the grave extinction threat now facing all of Africa's lions. Numbers have dropped uh, by, in the past decade, up to 75%. Uh, that's a staggering amount. I think the greater world does think of Africa as this big open landscape, and it's not. As humans are encroaching and animal territories are getting smaller and more defined. Kevin believes documenting his extraordinary encounters with lions. <laughs> <laughs> can inspire public empathy for the big cats. <laughs> squishy, squishy. <laughs> Which leads us out of South Africa, northwest, into Namibia. Here, the land and the lions are still wild. Hey! Another man has begun a dangerous experiment to keep them that way. <laughs> These are definitely the most aggressive lions I've ever been out. These lions were marked for destruction because they were escaping and hunting people, so people were hunting them. Dave Salmoni is a zoologist, big cat trainer, and a host for Animal Planet. But now he's taking on a new challenge, living for six months at the Arindi Game Reserve. It's here Dave is attempting something unprecedented, a kind of rehabilitation of an extremely aggressive pride of wild lions. Hey! Hey! No, no! Cut it out! What made these the bad scene? It's probably their history. You know, if, if your only interaction with people is negative, like these guys being ex-cattle raiders, being ex-man-eaters, just only saw people when a dart gun was coming out. You learn to hate them. But these lions will need to unlearn some of their aggression toward humans if they are to survive here. Orinda, you see, like an increasing number of African parks, supports its wondrous diversity of wildlife and habitat through ecotourism. But if every encounter with a human turns into an attack, stop, stop, stop! Arindi fails and the lions die. That's where Dave comes in. Hey! And all of this is paid for by people coming to see you. It's 
So, hey, you know what? Tough love, baby. It's coming. And it's coming in the face of me. Dave is essentially going to try to embed himself with this pride, getting closer on foot than anyone ever has, and getting to know these lions as family. Uh, top of the pride is Brutus. He's the big dominant male. His brother is Otis. Cleo is what I would consider the dominant female of the pride. How old Her, is she? I would say she's similar to age to the boys. You know, anywhere from 12 to 14 ish. Dave is testing the limits, trying to get closer with every encounter. Everybody, what you think? You a good boy? Hey, good boy. It's a game of inches and claws. Hey, no, 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 no. hey, hey. No! Hi! Hi! For weeks, Dave has been tracking Brutus, trying to establish a relationship with the Pride's 14-year-old patriarch. instant, Dave's confidence shows signs of crumbling. Forget it! Hey! Forget it! Get out of here! I do have an ego, and I do think I'm intelligent enough to figure these guys out. But at that point, I was doubting myself. I was like, maybe I can't. Maybe these lines just don't like people. After weeks of trying to approach the lions without triggering a full-on charge, Dave seems defeated. I had one more idea, and that was just changing the way I walked, backwards instead of forwards. And he would start not with Brutus, but with the dominant female, Cleo. Hey! A normal walk for me starts jump off the quad, take a couple steps forward so they see that I'm on foot and off the quad. She didn't like that I'd get off and go forward, so what I started doing is get off the quad and my immediate step was backwards. It's fine, I'm gonna back away a bit more. And I just kept walking backward. As long as she was watching me, I just kept going backwards. And she would, uh, she found her calm. With Cleo calm, Brutus can relax too, and that changes everything. He just watched me and I would watch him and it was too beings interacting, forming a relationship so pure that you'll never get it anywhere else. Right. And you're like, this is why I'm here. While humans, of course, pose the major threat to African lions, sometimes danger comes from within the pride itself. Back in South Africa, Kevin Richardson has just saved a newborn cub from an attack by a lioness. I ran up to her and uh, she came flying at me. She charged me. She charged me full on charge and stopped literally half a meter in front of me. Wah, 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 wah. Tail flicking around, eyes as mad as a snake. Um, immediately to turn around and go back to the cub. She wanted to kill it. She nearly did. On the day we visited, the cub had just returned from the veterinarian. What kind of wounds did he have? The one lioness had him by the throat, under his arm here. That's quite that a looks like nice, a bad wound, nice yeah. laceration there. That was down to his rib cage. The one that we were quite worried about was that one, yeah. which managed to sever two of the three layers of muscle before the abdomen. In the wild, would he have lived? No, he would have been torn to shreds. He's a cute little guy. He's cloud. precious, eh? Yeah. And he didn't deserve to have such a bad deal. No. Dodging death, Kevin dubs the cub lucky, but perhaps too soon, because he's now been imprinted with human hands and smells. It's unlikely his mother will accept him back into the pride. After driving back to the sanctuary, Kevin brings Lucky to an enclosure where his mom has been isolated. If I held her, would you be able to bring the mother outside? No, I can't do that because, oh, there we go. That's okay. One last antibiotic 
I can't do that because um, mom has to be isolated from the pride. Tap, tap. Oh. And mom's moment of decision yeah. is at hand. Yeah. Yeah. Total acceptance. <laughs> you see how mal she was with me? Yeah. But when she realized that I was giving her the cup, then she was fine. Sometimes you get lucky. Do you feel confident that she's going to accept her now? Completely. There we go. Leave mom to it. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Enough. In the long weeks since this project began, the pride and Dave Salmoni's relationship to it has begun to change. Increasingly, there's a grudging acceptance of his presence, sometimes even a nonchalant indifference. Holy cow. The pride has had a windfall hunt. Now, most lion experts would tell you that the most dangerous thing you can do is get near a lion and his food. Dave is going to try to take a piece of meat from the pride's kill without being killed. The line between courage and hubris has never been thinner. I can see from here all the lion's claws went in the rump. There's some deep, deep ones. So this one was obviously running away, and the girls grabbed onto the bum. Perfect stranglehold. For a moment, it's just Dave, the Eland, and Brutus. When Brutus stood up and I was on that Eland carcass, that's a heart-stopping moment. Back and away, back and away. That's okay, buddy. I know you didn't do anything aggressive. I'm just gonna leave. Bye-bye. All right, Brutus, and I'm back in a nice, calm spot. Precisely what Brutus has made of this encounter is unknowable. As for Dave... You're a showman more than you are a zoologist, more than an animal trainer. Is that, is that what you're really doing out here? You know, I've been accused of everything that you said, and I'm going to be accused even more when people see this show. I don't need to defend myself anymore. You know, I do what I do. I'll explain it to you once, and then if you don't like that, then go off. You know, tell everybody that, you, that I'm an idiot and a showman and a whatever. Great, I, I don't need your recognition. I don't want to teach these lions for the rest of their lives to accept people into their pride like me. I just want them to be less dangerous and accepting of the ecotourists, whose money supports this giant game preserve. How this once vicious pride will react to them is now the ultimate test of Dave's project. Right behind this brush ridge, um, there's another car we can't see, another vehicle, but that has tourists in it, right? Yeah, exactly, and every one of them is a paying guest, and every one of them that gets a good photo of these lines, like they're going to, I'm gonna go home to a friend and say, hey, you gotta go to Lorendi. That place has got some cool lions. And one strange man. <laughs> yeah. In the end, the two men we have met tonight, Kevin and Dave Salmoni, may be viewed as lion-hearted, cut it out, or foolhardy. Though the truth is, they are both. In any event, the judgment of humans is never high on their list of priorities. If I get taken out by a line today, tomorrow, or the next day, and I got put back down on this earth and said, here's another second chance, how would you do it differently? I would say, I would do it exactly the same. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.